in the early days of my medical school, when I was posted as an intern in the pediatrics department, which also happened to be one of my favorite postings, I used to see an anguished and a troubled mother bring her 15 year, one year old son every 15 days for blood transfusions. And I used to wonder at that time why, because I was really just introduced to the clinical practice. Little did I know then that this child was suffering from a lethal blood disorder called as thalassemia. And really there was no remedy except for periodic blood transfusions, that too only to extend the life of the child, not as a cure. It was at this point, although I did not have an answer as to what can be done, I knew in my mind that I wanted to be the missing link between the mother and the child in a speciality where I can be with both of them in their difficult times. And that's how I chose the field of fetal medicine. As my practice advanced in fetal medicine and I saw more and more of these complicated rare cases, I realized thalassemia is but one of the smaller and milder forms of genetic disorders that a child inherits. There are far more complex, critical and debilitating disorders that can be passed on from generations to generations. And then I realized how much of a social impact all this has not only on the parents but on the families as well and cause a lot of restructuring. So today when I counsel these parents, I am a party and a witness to their helplessness, to their plight and also their feeling of, oh God, why me only? Thankfully, we are in an era where we have answers to at least some of these questions. The modern medicine has advanced and it is an intersection where we can at least identify these problems, prevent some of them and treat a fewer of them. Hopefully, we will get better in our understanding and treat all of them. That's for the future to, to tell. So before I delve into the questions and answers of how, when, what can be done for these genetic problems, I would like to share a little bit of basics about genetics. So we all have cells. Each cell has DNA. These DNA is tightly packed into small bundles called genes and they are the blueprint of what we are. The skin tone we have, some are fair, some are dark, some are whitish. The eye colors that we inherit, the susceptibility of disorders that we have, all is due to the DNA that we have received from our parents. So it is this blueprint that is crucial in transmitting the disorders and also the traits that we have. So to draw an analogy and make things simpler for you to understand, Consider our life as a storybook and we name this storybook as the human genome. Just like every book has chapters, it has pages, it has paragraphs, it has sentences, it has words, so does our genetic information. So the tightly packed bundle of genes that I just mentioned, if you consider the chapter was the chromosome, the paragraphs or the sentences were the genes and the letters were DNA. So even a small mistake in translation of this DNA that we inherit can cause major problems. I will show you that by another example. But it is this passage from the parents to the mother that is extremely crucial. The smallest journey but the most vital one in an individual's life. So just to explain about the chapters and the genes and the DNAs that I have said. So when there is a problem with the chapters, we get chromosomal disorders. To name a few, Down syndrome is the most common, common one which I think all of you can relate to and understand. So instead of inheriting one copy of 21 from father and one copy of 21 from mother, if the individual inherits a third copy, the child tends to have Down syndrome. So for example, all of us come with the blood group under category AA2. So instead of getting AA2, so A comes from one parent, A2 comes from one, in a simplified manner I am explaining this. But if there is an error in translating this, it can lead to blood disorders like sickle cell and thalassemia. The simple analogy that I would like to draw is, so I read in an article 1 million copies of a book were sold just in two days. And you know why that happened? The title track of the book was meant to be an idea can change your life. And the title track while getting tight without realization become, became an idea can change your life. 
and just imagine the uproar and the cell that it had. So this is all in a lighter sense. What I meant to say was, if a simple L changing to W can cause that much change, just imagine the millions of genes that are there in our body and the translational changes that can cause in a human being. So to put simply, it is this transition that is the culprit in having problems that people have or uh, people inherit as a genetic disorder. So uh, now that we have understood the basics, coming down to the main important question, okay, so what can we do about it now? Is there anything that can be done to change this genetic makeup? Genetic makeup we can't change, we have inherited from our parents, however, we can identify it. So what is in our hands, we can do, what is not, we cannot. But we can identify if at all an individual is susceptible to a genetic disorder or for example multifactorial disorders such as diabetes, hypertension, etc. So the question is whom should we screen, should we screen everybody, should everybody have this test? Probably yes, if you could then you should. However especially those people who are married in relationships such as consanguineous marriage, married between cousins, paternal, maternal cousins or second cousins are the ones that are, who are those who are at very high risk or for example if one of the sibling has it, the next sibling has a 20% higher chance of having it. So those are the people who should opt for testing and this test is called as carrier testing. So we try to identify if the parents are carrier of this culprit gene and it is done through simple blood test that is called as carrier testing and it is easily available. It is not a novelty anymore. It is here available at your doorsteps in our city, in our hospitals. The second question then is, okay, now that the patient is already pregnant, I mean not patient but a lady is already pregnant, can she, if she is concerned, is there anything that we can do to know if her fetus or the child in the womb is having this disorder? And the answer to this question also again is yes. Just to show it with a small example that I have recently had. So a young couple coming to me with their son, six or seven year old son saying that my son is now unable to get up from sitting position. He is otherwise a bright child, scores about 90%, was walking, talking, playing with his friends, but of late he doesn't want to go out of the house. He tries to climb stairs, but he says, I am getting tired. Initially they thought he is just trying to avoid, avoid it, but realized that that was for a fact. And when they brought the child, this was what it looked like. So I asked the child to sit and then stand up, because that was the main problem that the couple said. And you can really see that the child was not making up a story. It was a problem. There was a problem with the child and this problem is called as a muscular dystrophy. And looking at that, I was, your heart sinks when you have to give news like this to the parents. I know from my understanding and the medical fraternity knows from their understanding that if they have certain type of a dystrophy, their child will not probably survive past 20s and it is heartbreaking to give them this news that their healthy child, bright child is probably not going to make it for no fault of his because he is carrying a disorder that has been genetically inherited. So that was one part of it. The second part was when she comes again after two years asking, I have a son who is now affected. Can I do something at least so that my next pregnancy is okay and thankfully I said the answer is yes. So we tested her son, we got to know what genes were the culprit genes and then we again tested the second pregnancy, this time not after the child was born but before the child was born, right in third month, before the uh, emotional attachments become too much and it is a difficult thing or a difficult decision for parents to take, we, we can identify if there is a problem. So this we do by a testing called as CVS or amniocentesis wherein we take small micrograms tissue of placenta or the amniotic fluid and a small needle almost painless or maybe like a blood test it is without touching the baby, without disturbing the pregnancy can be very easily done, it is easily available and the knowledge that it gives is immense about the child's genetic makeup. So we did this and they have a healthy daughter now. So to what the point that I was trying to make is it is all available, it is awareness, awareness and awareness that takes to get the results, to give life to those children. 
So then this is the second part. One was identification, second was prevention. Is if there is anything can we do to avoid it? The third important part comes is okay, now it has it has been identified, it has been prevented. If I have a child, can I treat the child? And till late, maybe till last two years or so, the answer was no, but not anymore. The answer now and the latest technological advance in modern genetics is that if a child is affected and we get to know after birth that this child, so initially I told you the example of thalassemia. As an intern, I did not have an answer for that mother, but now probably I can offer her something. So what we can do is called as gene editing. So the faulty gene that was identified in that child can now be changed or replaced and inserted into the baby and it can help in editing the faulty gene. Although all of this is still a lot of research based, but it has started gaining approvals. And did we ever think that something like chat GPT or AI would come? But it has come. It is going to stay. Likewise, I think gene editing will come and it will stay. But better is to avoid and prevent the problems. The last thing is the question of, okay, we can identify, we can prevent, we can treat. Is there anything we can do to change the problem? And the answer again is yes. Say for example, if you know, like everybody has a health checkup these days. So if your health checkup before your, you know, office joining or something, you were given this test where you get to know whether you are susceptible to a problem like diabetes or hypertension. I'm sure the moment you get the result that you are susceptible, the next day we all will join gym, cut down on our junk food, reduce our sugars, start having a healthy life. Just imagine the translation that is going to have in the world if we only get to know that there is a possibility we could have this problem. So that foreknowledge is going to immensely empower us. This was one but a small subset. The other thing is, let's say, so coming to more important and lethal problems. If I had a blood test and if I were to know that I am probably susceptible to breast cancer in my late 40s or late 50s when it usually presents, probably I can't change the genes like I can do lifestyle modification for diabetes, but I can improve the health checkup patterns that I have. And then the story will go on. We will have more and more empowerment by understanding of genetics. So finally, to conclude, I would say the human life from conception to birth is a remarkable voyage. There are genes, there are stories, there are journeys, and the future that it holds. So let the, let's make this journey a memorable one by empowering ourselves with this knowledge, understanding, and use it to our practical application. Thank you.